This is the U.S. intelligence agency mind control. Yeah, it's like normal. <laughs> no, I couldn't because my computer wouldn't work. Oh, really? Fuck's sake. Oh, camera, please. King. And they're off to a slow start. The Dow is off almost 1.2%. I haven't 1. been able to do a promo or tweet or anything, or which is what I normally do. The really continues. Hopes of the Dow Jones heading to the 40,000 mark are fixed. Oh, I'll do the Instagram The Dow is closer place. to 39,000 than it is 40,000. The Nasdaq is off to about 1.3%. The S&P. Who economics? Cares? Who cares? All I want is Tesla. The today and the, um, Tesla is are cutting interest rates in June, whether or not it's amazing yeah, because just last week we were so close to hitting that 40,000 milestone for the first time ever. But markets are off to a, a rough start to the new month, uh -huh. to the new quarter. A lot of it goes back to concerns about the Fed, right? There are uh, sort of growing doubts seeping into the market about whether or not the Fed is really going to be able to start cutting interest rates in June, right. whether or not they'll really still be able to do three interest rate cuts this year. So you see the doubt. Well, have you, because the, the reason that I put this on is because I heard that Elon did something with Tesla and it was like, um, shit going on where he's like fucking over Tesla or something. I want to see if I can try and find something on this. But down 1.2%, about 470 points. But we should note that this market has been historically strong, right? I mean, not just uh, near record highs, but uh, sell offs have been pretty rare. In fact, the SP 500s, for then the rest of the markets, do some problems in some of their factories. Uh, but it also Hello, reflects a lot of competition. Okay, here we go. Poor delivery data. That's that's what I wanted. I wanted the fucking answer. All right, finally. We finally got there. Thanks, CNN. You wasted that time. And on the day, the company posted its uh, worst annual sales performance since 2020. This reflects uh, some infrastructure issues, some problems in some of their factories, uh, but it also reflects the fact that they've got a lot of competition, right, both at home and abroad, in, namely in uh, in China. Now, Dan Ives, the veteran tech analyst, he called this Tesla quarter a, quote, unmitigated disaster. He warned that this could be a seminal mm -hmm. moment for the company. They've either got to reverse this black eye, he says, or they're going to allow a darker narrative to take hold. So, uh, Rahul, we'll keep a close eye on Tesla. Darker because narrative. <laughs> Well, here's CBS to tell us more. Elon oh, Musk's God. Tesla is now one of the worst performing companies on the S&P 500. Hey, this guy is actually not bad. We watched one of this guy's videos. This guy's actually pretty good. 500. Thanks in part to really brutal sales numbers so far this year. These might be the roughest days we've seen in years for Tesla. Between January and March, Tesla delivered around 387,000 vehicles worldwide. That's almost 100,000 fewer than it delivered the quarter before Man. and 8.5% less than the same quarter last year. We've missed on the first quarter, I and mean, we've not just missed, Ed, but it is a considerable, considerable undershoot. But even as that news sent the market into a mild panic, those watching closely weren't all that surprised because Tesla's been struggling for a while now. Its annual revenue grew by only three... How dare you uncover my plot of showing these videos? <laughs> 3% in 2023. And take a look at its stock value, a steady downward trend. If you look at Tesla's history and the number of advantages they had even three, four, five years ago, that's where you start to feel like maybe this isn't just a quarterly issue, but a long-term indicator. The company even slashed prices in 2023, hoping to spur sales, but clearly those cuts weren't enough. So why is Tesla struggling to meet investor expectations? Well, part of it has to do with the EV industry as a whole, and part of it has to do with the company itself. Let's start with the wider market forces at play here. While EV sales are still I'm actually super forces. interested in this. Like this, this just, kind of stuff about I, it's EVs, just, I love he's it. Using, he's using the capitalist words in it. That's why yeah. I'm just going, markets. <laughs> <laughs> no, I fucking, I love videos on electric vehicles because I want them su to succeed, but I also don't want them to kill the petrol engine. Right? So it's like, there's um, the overhaul it's infrastructure that would be needed for petrol to go like uh, also you have diesel diesel ne is, is mm. going to stay around forever. Yeah. But bio, you also have biodiesel, which already mm -hmm. mitigates that. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, you there's like even a whole illegal like biodiesel, like you steal the fucking fat out of restaurants to make biodiesel. Yes, I did know this. Yeah, there's like a whole like there's a whole uh, Simpsons episode. Well, there's like a just a whole like a, it's like a type of like cr crime that's out there. Mm. There's network yeah. that their crime that they commit is making biodiesel. <laughs> how uh, how criminal? <laughs> yeah, 
Wait, what? You're taking oil away from the American pocket? <laughs> you're stealing oil from America? Based? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's basically how they could, that you want to look at it. It's like it's like collecting <laughs> rainwater. I don't know if that actually is illegal. I guess because it can have pathogens in it. So they say it's illegal because they recommend not collecting and drinking rainwater. Do they really? Because they I, recommend it here, but they don't recommend drinking it. They just say, "Which who believes rocks talk to you or something," said that she collects rainwater, and the state says it's illegal. She didn't. <laughs> hey, she didn't talk based. She talked like somebody who believes in horoscopes. But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah growing faster than gas-powered car sales in most countries. Their popularity really has started to cool off. In most, in most countries. With consumer uh, did you also notice that uh, most of the European companies that were like, we're going to do all EVs by 2025 are like, uh, we're sorry, we're making petrol cars again. <laughs> well, like, you know how he's saying in most countries, though? Like, mm -hmm. whoa, crazy. Yeah. How's the industry what, cut, though? Yeah. I what, think what what, you'll find... What's the sale unit? compared to yeah. sale unit yeah so I, I guarantee what you'll find is companies will start making evs for their top of the range right and then they'll make hybrids for the lower lot the lower levels which is exactly mm -hmm. what it should be hybrids have been around forever yeah so, you know? and they're only getting more efficient and better mm -hmm. so... well even this uh silent tank they made they recommend running it as a hybrid mm. until technology advances the army's funding something they're not sure if they have a solution to, you know? Yeah. Classic army. We're interested in all electric vehicles seemingly coming to a stall. Prices are dropping. EVs are having a bad time. Like, a really bad time. I've said it before and I'll say like, it again. Like, a really Ordinary bad time. just don't want EVs. We know part of the hesitation around EVs is about whether cities are actually ready to support a major That's shift. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. It's, it's infrastructure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The amount of money. And also, bro, uh, not only that, but... You know what's in those charger cables, right? Yeah, lots of copper. Okay, anyway, moving on. So that's that. Mainly point. whether there are enough charging stations in the right areas and whether the stations that do exist even work. Can you two connect? Charger. Meet Rivian. Rivian. Meet Charger. Mm -hmm. Connect. Error detected. A recent Canadian study well, on the state of charging infrastructure here found that... Let I mean, this was... I did a, a thing for uni where I looked into this and like one of the things that I suggested because my the assignment was an advisor to the government on how to adopt EVs. Uh, one of my uh, suggestions was a multi-billion dollar dump into EV infrastructure, especially in Australia where you need long distance driving. You need a lot of charges on major roads for people to be able to use them. If there's no charges, there's no point. Or you just isolate the states and they become individual countries and block the borders. Bam, EVs now become uh, viable. Problem solved. Less than half of people who actually own an EV were satisfied with their province's public charging infrastructure. BC and Ontario reported just a 20% yeah. satisfaction rate. Range anxiety is a really important one. So the infrastructure that goes along with it, there's been some high profile stories about people. <laughs> yep, that'll happen. Uh, electric cars don't like the cold. Uh, That's a, this yeah. is a Trump talking point. I mean, they don't. <laughs> they really don't. Yes, they don't is... like floods. This is also true. Neither do regular cars. Uh, actually. Regular cars don't either. <laughs> the car was thirsty. Did you Can take stuck, me? Whether it was in Canada Instagram? or and another another one of my suggestions on you that thing was, the uh, they I do I have the link I haven't made it yet. Um, the other one of the other suggestions was. Uh, especially in Australia, where we have this thing called a luxury car tax, where any car over sixty thousand dollars becomes ninety thousand um, dollars, just because taxation um, is theft. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So the the Model Three, the Tesla was meant to be the cheap option. That's like thirty grand. Uh, it's a seventy thousand dollar car here, completely unaffordable. So my one of my suggestions was to remove all taxes 
and give a 25% rebate on all non-Chinese built EVs uh, to get the people into higher higher end EVs to give them a better experience to encourage uh, repurchasing, right? <clears throat> that was my logic behind it. And um, the reason that I say not the Chinese ones is because they exploit their um, uh, developing country status to undercut the entire market and put their shitty EVs everywhere. Everywhere. The ones that blow up. It's very cool. Um, so that was why I said non-Chinese. Also, I justified it because they mostly own all of the cobalt mines, which is required for the batteries. So I use that as well because, you know, government love grandstanding. Not to be confused with Coltan. Yes. Everyone know the um, difference? No, but I think you... Sound off if you don't know the difference I, between Cobalt and Coltan. Think and I'll tell you. You have shown us the video explaining it. Or you may have just shown me. I can't Coltan remember. goes in cell phones. Cobalt mm -hmm. goes in car batteries. Yeah. Um... So that is one of the bigger things that I put in there. Um, also, not to ban petrol cars, because the only people who wanted to ban petrol cars out of everybody interviewed were people who were rich enough to afford EVs and were already going to buy an EV. So they were in support of banning petrol cars because they already have the money and the need and the want to buy an electric car. That's why you don't ban the petrol engines. Okay. So anybody, Nobody's any car the company, petrol engine, so. every, the car companies were saying that they weren't going to make them anymore, which is effectively banning them through capitalism. But yeah, sure. capitalism you, succeeded, that... and now they're not. <laughs> you believe they were going to do that, though? No, they were never going to fucking do it. There was no fucking way. You really think Porsche is they never going to make a fucking petrol they car They said again? that because it was in line with their profit motive, not because exactly. they intended to do it. Come on. <laughs> fucking so funny. People using an F-150 to drive Yeah, there's, there's a lot of discussion with EVs, and it's also very interesting. A lot of the examples I looked at was in Norway. Their model is very interesting. But, of course it is, because it's Norway. Their models are always very interesting. Distances. The other part for consumers is about money. High interest rates in both Canada and the U.S. have made it considerably more expensive to lease a car. And EVs oh, offense, in but general it sounds like are still more expensive fucking than... Fucking commie gobbledygook. No offense. Gas-powered cars. And so you have people that were looking at maybe buying a Chevy Bolt or maybe buying the new Tesla model and have said, you know what? This round, I'm going to go back and buy a $40,000 car, internal combustion engine. I know how it works. I know what the, you know, the upkeep of it is going to be. And I don't want to take on that extra cost right now. Vroom, to be clear, vroom, Tesla is still noises. by far the global <laughs> leader in EV sales, having sold close to 5 million EVs since its inception. But right now, they are underperforming. They're not growing in the way shareholders expected them to, while at least some of their competitors are doing the opposite. I, mean, I've, I know about the, the construction practices. Obviously, the construction practices. Hey, look, Chinese EV. Um, <laughs> but I didn't know about like the tech and stuff. That's interesting. Tesla's biggest rival, for example, Chinese company BYD, actually had a Garbage better sales cars. quarter in late 2023. And right now, every single car has been thieved from another car company. Like the, their design is basically exactly the same. This company is a joke. See, Nobody the thing should is, buy these cars. The thing is, is that Jack has a much better ability to. Uh, sit here and entertain and talk to himself that I do when I have to stall. <laughs> and, uh, the two companies. That's what I'm learning I here. <laughs> I like cars. These are basically neck and neck. Part of BOID's sudden rise likely goes back to the cost. The starting price for its yeah, newest see? car, the Auto 3, is currently listed at less than $17,000. Uh, see what I'm saying? I was Tesla doing background right work. Did about... we pull this up uh... Ah, uh, you see what I'm saying? No, no, I didn't. That's funny. <laughs> see, look, this is exactly what I'm fucking talking about, right? It's exactly what I was talking about. 47,000. Well, the Chinese electric vehicle industry is kind of a unique circumstance. They have uh -huh. got full support from the government, and they've also got control of most of the global lithium supplies. What this equates hey, to lithium. is Chinese automakers. You know what they also do? You know what lithium goes in? 
You know what they also do and have? Massive EV graveyards of brand new cars. <laughs> because they buy them to inflate the sales numbers and then leave them to rot. Yay! That's why they're cheap. Chris can build cars far less uh, costly and then they can sell them for a lower MSRP and still make a profit. Just a couple of years ago, there were only a handful of EV models to choose from in North America. Tesla really dominated the market. But this year, there are more than 50 to choose from. And that's growing. Ford says its EV sales grew 86% year it's, over year. The Hyundai funniest, saw their sales increase the funniest thing about Tesla to me you look at how is many that mm -hmm. they like came out being like, we're way ahead. We're going to have the best shit. Nobody's going to compete with us. And then Elon literally did the opposite of go woke, go broke. Mm -hmm. And went anti-woke and broke you know mm -hmm. like and just like oh, and you know because like go yeah. woke go broke doesn't happen they make money so it's like mm -hmm. so it's like anti-broke make money some sort of you know something that's mm -hmm. just as cringe as the term go woke go broke you know and he collapsed the company more now nobody mm -hmm. fucking wants them and everyone else yeah. is getting like better evs like bro you mm -hmm. literally blew it by being a fucking douchebag. Like, if he wasn't <laughs> such a fuckhead, bro, he would be good. Yeah. It's it's literally just his personality that nobody wants. <laughs> bro, just, like, shut up and go make your money. Like, yeah, I'll stop I'm... asking to tax the Ricks if Elon Musk shuts the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here. I That's will... called democracy. There you go. Marker made. We'll, we'll clip that. <laughs> Companies are out there competing with we'll clip it and post it to Twitter with your, your rabbit ear <laughs> <laughs> them for this exact corner of the market. I if they wish they're rabbit ears uncontested. Uh, it makes sense that, that they're they're getting beat up. Well like cat ears. Yeah, they're also like really <laughs> shitty in Chinese. But there are also I, a few I, things I very specific to test and yeah. And, uh, I was That's like fair. I sent like a specific brand to my mom and she was like, mm. this is what I ordered. Cause uh, <laughs> like Amazon always fucks up when I try to order shit from there. So oh, I was really? like, here's the brands. Right. And I even discussed with her, I don't want to get like bad headphones because of Amazon. Mm. Right. So like, like make sure like, and she even agreed like, okay, buy directly from like the supplier. Right. So I sent her like these exact things that are like directly from actual suppliers and then she just orders something completely fucking different awesome. and Chinese. And I'm like, whatever. I just need new headphones right now. <laughs> the other ones, they're like, like, um, the foam has so much dust on them too, from like just the chinchilla uh, shit. Like I don't yeah. need that on my ear. Like they're old headphones. Yeah. You need leather, leather cups. <clears throat> oh, they're just they're worn out. Cut. They're worn yeah. out. They're old as fuck. One side nah. doesn't work because the chinchilla chewed the wire. Yeah. That might have investors on edge. One thing that differentiates Tesla from pretty much every other EV company is its full steam ahead approach to self-driving cars. Their R&D in this area carries massive revenue potential for the company, but also a lot of risk. Okay. I, oh my gosh. I really it. don't care. Oh my gosh. About Tesla self-driving. That's crazy. It's just one. Unbelievable. Point. Right now, Tesla's self-driving software is characterized as a level two or partially automated system, which hmm. requires that the human still monitors all tasks and can take control at any time. The goal is to get it up to a level five. In yeah, future, right. Which would mean zero human attention or interaction. Good luck. Required. That'd be gangster though, wouldn't it? Bro, you see like uh, this report, it's like, uh, you know how like Target was like, we're getting rid of self-checkouts, right? Yeah. Because it's not saving time. Mm -hmm. So um, it works well with the grocery store we have here, especially with like Instacart and stuff. Yeah. But you like pay for the items beforehand and you scan them with your phone and just walk out. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. can scan the items yourself with your phone, mm -hmm. pay for them with your phone and walk out of the store. Right. Yeah. So they determined like basically 70% of those transactions still had to have human intervention and it was all being exported to india it was fake oh, epic that's cool <laughs> fucking hell
extremely confident that level five or essentially complete autonomy will be with. Uh, will Look at his fucking boomerang. Very quickly. All right, can and we stop watching stuff about Tesla? Self-driving tech as one of the main reasons that they expect the company. I don't to care. Outperform. It's not going to. They're not going to fucking achieve level five. It's a marketing plot. It's capitalist. Well, oh god, more actually, EVs. no. There's there's multiple points here. That was just one of Look the. Look at points. how many R and D. There's the next point. Uh, he's talking about the crashes. I don't want to show those either. <laughs> we know they happen. <laughs> here we go. Consumer attitudes towards Tesla is now either in or close to coming to uh, trial, and depending on how they're resolved, it could be another hit to Tesla in terms of financials and also really image. Which brings us to the next part of this story. Tesla's reputation. According to one market survey, the percentage of respondents who said they trust or like Tesla has fallen from more I'm than sure the cyber truck helped. under 60 since the beginning of 2022. <laughs> and the percentage of respondents who said they'd consider buying a Tesla fell even further from more than 70% to around 30%. Meanwhile, the firm says their scores for Mercedes, BMW, and Audi, all of whom also make EVs, have all been hovering between 44 and 47%. You know what? That actually seems fairly accurate to myself. Because, like, my <clears throat> 2018 would have probably, if I had the money, bought a Tesla, right? I wouldn't fucking go near them now. There's no fucking way. Well, there, what other the EV the... was there back then? They had uh, so much hype. Even even uh, Boogie2988 bought one he couldn't afford. Because every <laughs> it was like they had the Hummer and iPhone status for their minute there. Mm. Yeah, true. Mm. It was like the hype yeah. item, and that's how you used to be is hype items. Yeah, that is true. Hmm. Interesting. But now, yeah, like even every every company has EVs now. Mm-hmm. And they're all about the about the same or cheaper. And even like the high end Teslas, you're paying two hundred thousand dollars, you're in Porsche market. You're in high-end BMW, Audi, German market. Like, why would you buy Tesla? It doesn't make any sense logically anymore. Ford attributed at least part of this discrepancy to Musk himself. <laughs> the people that were going to buy a car because they love Elon Musk and just want to be a part of that, they probably already bought their car. The question now is, how do you get the suburban couple outside of Calgary or outside of Toronto or Montreal that just need to get their kids to soccer practice and drive into the office three or four days a week? How do you get them? And I think you don't necessarily get them by having a, a slightly mercurial CEO who's going on Twitter rants about whatever the latest in culture war is. Anal- mm, interesting. Fair point. Anyway, here's the Chinese EV graveyard. China, the government has been pulling out a lot of subsidies Great, to try to get the electric right, vehicle next, industry moving the on. Ground. If well, you can't have we'll... good audio. It's ABC too. That's the funniest thing. Move on. This is just some, part, oh, some talking heads. Move on. To 300 kilometers on one just charge. go to the next and stuff. And so I think for the just average consumer, the uh, that kind of driving pictures. range isn't that satisfactory. And so like, the buyers really cars. weren't that interested. And now these uh, from Bloomberg News visited were in Hangzhou. It's a city that's you know, known as a tourist uh, attraction. Well, you know, China, so they built the shit before they need it because that's central planning. <laughs> just like those, look at those buildings all being constructed in the background for no fucking reason. <laughs> Because that's well, they, um... that's how that's smart. Because you build it ahead of time. You know, people were making fun of China because a subway station went to nowhere. Are you aware of a CIA psychological profile about you, sir? Would you be interested in hearing what the CIA had to say? This secret study portrays as a brilliant but dangerous megalomaniac who is likely to pursue his own aims in disregard of U.S. interests. He's an uncertain ally. Shall I go on, or would you prefer that I stop, sir? 